Hey, what's going on everyone? This video, I'm doing a comparison of the Nexus 4 up against the Sony Xperia ZL. Now, keep in mind, I'm not going to go into the exact specifications of each device, like the measurements or the weight. If you want to see those kind of fine details, you can find a review for each device in the description below, in which I get into those details. Or you can wait for the annotation links at the ending of this video. Uh, so what I'm going to do is start with the physical design and hardware specs, and then kind of move into the software, and you guys can decide for yourself which one's a better device. Now, in terms of measurements, um, they're almost the same width and almost the same thickness, but however, the length, it, the X Xperia ZL is just like a millimeter bigger, as you guys can see. It's just faintly bigger. So if size is a concern, uh, they're so similar in size that I wouldn't even be worried about it, to be honest. Um, so they're relatively the same in that sense. In terms of weight, the Xperia ZL is just slightly heavier by maybe like 10 grams. It's, again, such a small difference, but if you hold both of them together, you can notice that, yeah, the Xperia ZL is slightly heavier. In terms of the screen, the Nexus 4 has a true HD IPS plus 4.7 inch display with a resolution of 768 by 1280, uh, basically meaning that it's 720p HD with an approximate PPI of 320, whereas the Xperia ZL has a 5 inch TFT capacitive touchscreen, 16 million colors, 1080 by 1920 screen, basically meaning that this is actually 1080p HD, uh, powered by Bravia Engine 2 with a approximate PPI of 441. So in terms of RAM, both of them have 2 gigs of RAM, so they're the same in that aspect. And as for the processors, both of them have a 1.5 GHz quad-core S4 processor. And both of them also have the Andreno 320 GPU. So in terms of general like uh, speed processing, etc. and graphic processor, it, they're, they're the same thing practically. Um, in terms of quadrant score, okay, I'm not a fan of quadrant score. I like practical usability and testing instead, but I'll give it to you guys anyway. The Nexus 4 on uh, quadrant score got 4,700 approximately, yeah, that's what it averages. On Antutu, it gets 20,886. However, on Quadrant Score, the Xperia ZL just like demolishes the Nexus 4 by getting 8,057 on Quadrant. However, on Antutu, it's almost the same, actually slightly less, at 20,282. So, the Antutu score is almost the same, whereas the Quadrant Score is huge difference, despite them packing almost the same processors and everything. Uh, so that's why I don't trust benchmark scores, I never liked them, but I'll get into general performance later on. Both of them have an NFC chip, so you're set in that sense. As for the camera, the Nexus 4 has an 8 megapixel rear camera with 1080p recording at 30 frames per second, and the front facing camera has a 1.3 megapixel at 1080p recording at 30 frames per second, whereas the Xperia ZL has a rear camera that's 13 megapixels, records at 1080p at 30 frames per second, and the front facing camera is 2 megapixels, again, records at 1080p at 30 frames per second. As for the battery, the Nexus 4 has a 2100 milliamp lithium polymorph battery, non removable, and the same issue with the XL, it's non removable. However, the battery is slightly bigger in terms of capacity, as a 2370 milliamp non removable ion battery. So both devices aren't water resistant, they're not dust resistant, for some bizarre reason you can't access the battery for either device. This is not a battery slot, this is where the micro SD and the SIM card go, so don't get confused about that. Um, so I'm not sure why the manufacturers decided to make the battery not accessible, which isn't really good for travelers who need to switch batteries on the go. Uh, so really poor planning in that sense. In terms of storage, now here's big deal breaker for many people, the Nexus 4. The Nexus 4 only has 16 gigabytes internal, no support for additional storage. 16 gigs, that's it, and that's the larger model. Uh, whereas the Xperia ZL has 16 gigs and external memory with a micro SD card slot up to 32 gigabytes. There are debates if it can support 64, however, according to Sony's official specs, it only supports up to 32 gigabytes maximum. I don't have a 64 gigabyte card, so I can't really test that myself, so I apologize in advance. Um, as for connectivity, both of them have the usual GPS, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. This is where things differ a little bit for each device. The Nexus 4 supports mirror casting, which is basically wireless, um, I, I guess, mirroring your display onto your TV. Of course, you do need a mirror cast adapter for what your display device, so your TV must support it or your Blu-ray player or whatever. Um, as for the uh, USB port, it has slim port, so you can actually get like a micro SD to sorry a micro USB port to slim port adapter, and you can actually plug this into your HDMI port and your HDTV, and whatever's on your phone can be displayed on your TV. 
The Xperia ZL has similar features, but in they're done in a different way. Um, it has NFC, so you can actually, with many Sony devices, you can tap the NFC chip onto an NFC device, and it'll start playing uh, your music or videos, whatever, wirelessly to that device. As for the micro USB port, it doesn't have slim port. You would need an MHL adapter, so MHL to HDMI, it is possible. So both of them support you know, HDMI connectivity. It's just the Nexus 4 uses slim port, the Xperia ZL uses um, MHL. And of course, the cool thing about the Xperia ZL is that you can actually use it as a remote because there is an IR blaster built inside. So you can actually technically use this as a remote for many of your devices. All right, so let's go over the physical design, which one's more comfortable to hold. Um, the, the Nexus 4, both of them are relatively comfortable to hold. The Nexus 4 has not really curved edges, they're more like straight, diagonal, and then the back. But it's still pretty comfortable. However, the, the back is just completely flat. It's like this plastic glass at the back. Um, whereas the Xperia ZL has a slight curve to it, a more natural curve on the side, you guys can see. And the back, I love this texture. You guys can actually see the pattern here. It, it's really comfortable to hold. So both devices are comfortable to hold, but the Xperia ZL is the clear, obvious winner in this sense. So in terms of the speakers, uh, the Xperia ZL has at the back, as with the Nexus 4. And in my review, I did speaker tests for each device. However, with my own ears, I can tell that the Xperia ZL is louder. Not by a huge amount, but it's just slightly louder than the Nexus 4. Okay, so remember how I was saying that I'm not a fan of benchmark testing? That's because I like practical testing instead. And I have to say that after playing some very high-intensive graphic games on both devices, uh, both of them are pretty equal. If you want to see a gaming dem demo video for the Nexus 4 or Xperia ZL, you can find the, those videos in the description below as well. Basically, I played like high-intensive graphic games on both devices like the uh, Dark Knight Rises, Need for Speed Most Wanted, uh, Dead Trigger, and both of them handle it with ne next to no lag. There was like maybe the odd hiccup, maybe like once, 20 minutes, like once a session I'm playing, and then that's it. And even then, that hiccup is so quick, it it's like nothing that would like interfere with your gaming at all. Okay, so let's talk about the actual displays of each device. Uh, here's the Xperia ZL and here's the Nexus 4. I'm not sure if you guys can notice it because YouTube tends to downgrade video quality, but with my own eyes, I can clearly see that the Xperia ZL is the better screen. Not by a huge amount, mind you. I'm not saying the Nexus 4 has a bad screen. It has a great screen, actually, the Nexus 4 does. Um, I just feel that the Xperia ZL tends to have a bit more sharpness to it. I mean, the screen is on paper, it, like if the specifications, it is better, but just by looking at it, it, it is actually true. Uh, I can see the colors are a lot more vibrant, the image is a lot more crisper and sharper. Uh, even for 1080p movie playback, both of them play MKV files that are like 8, 9 gigs, just fine. However, they look slightly better on the Xperia ZL. Again, that's because it has a better screen. I'm not saying that the Nexus 4 has a bad screen, it's just that the Xperia ZL has the better one. Of course, both devices have LED notification lights at the bottom. The one for the Xperia ZL is a bit bigger, so it's a bit easier to see. Now, in terms of the front-facing camera, I'm not a fan of the Xperia ZL's design. You can see here where my thumb is. I don't know why Sony did that, because when I was actually testing it out, um, at times it would hold the camera like this. Like this. You can see my hand slightly covering the camera and I would have to quickly move it away. As for the rear cameras, I don't like the Nexus 4 camera at all. I've, I've never liked it. I think for a camera phone, it's pretty bad. The Xperia ZL is, let's say, decent for a camera phone. It's pretty good. Even though it's 13 megapixels, it's not the greatest out there. There are actually better camera phones. However, it's pretty decent for today's day and age, but the Nexus 4 is a little disappointing. Okay, so let's start breaking this down into general comparisons and you guys can decide which is the better device. In terms of comfort, just simply holding it, the Xperia ZL is the clear winner. It's a lot better, more comfortable, you got this nice texture pattern, easier to grip. Um, in terms of the screen, which one is better for, you know, just screen clarity? Both of them are awesome screens, but the clear winner, again, is the Xperia ZL. In terms of multimedia playback, Okay, the, I would say that the winner here, not because of the screen clarity so much, it's more about the storage, it's the Xperia ZL. The fact that the Nexus 4 does not have external storage and the max capacity memory you can get is 16 gigs, it's not enough, especially if you take the bus often and you watch TV shows and movies and you want to put them on your hard drive, 
the, the Nexus 4 is not enough. The Xperia ZL supports micro SD card external storage. It just clearly wins in that regard. In terms of making phone calls, however, because they are both phones after all, they're pretty equal. I would say that they're pretty much the same. Now, one thing I didn't touch base on, which is really important to a lot of people, is software. The Nexus 4 is stock Android. Uh, you might notice that mine looks a little bit different. That's because I'm running CyanogenMod. However, stock Android, is, to me, is awesome. I, I love stock Android. I don't like all this cluttered uh, nonsense from manufacturers. Now, Sony, here's the thing. They have minimized uh, the amount of apps that come with their devices, and you'll notice that the just generally the home screen isn't as cluttered as it used to be on older Sony devices. They're getting better. They're starting to realize that stock Android is better. That's what people want. However, there's still the fact that it comes with a lot of manufacturer and bloatware from your carrier. For example, I'm on the Rogers network up here in Canada. You'll see right away three apps from my carrier. Whereas Nexus devices, if you get it from Google Play, come with no bloatware. It's just stock Android, the way Android should be. Whereas devices like this on a contract come with bloatware. However, even then, the software clearly wins on the Nexus device because Nexus devices will most likely get new updates of Android from Google first. If you were to ask me which device is better, this is strictly my opinion, so don't take it to heart. In my personal opinion, the better device is the Nexus 4. Now. Despite it having not enough storage, the camera being pretty bad, and not as comfortable compared to the Xperia ZL, etc, etc, I just love stock Android. I love modifying my devices, and this is a Nexus device, so I'm guaranteed to get updates quickly, and it's very easy to mod. So with those things said, I'm more of a geek, so this works to my liking better. However, it's pretty hard to say, you know, for you what you might want. In terms of multimedia device, I mentioned that the screen is better on the Xperia ZL and it supports more storage, so yeah, the ZL. In terms of software updates, it's clearly the Nexus. There's no competition about it, no bloatware, just stock Android, faster updates from Google, what more could you want? In terms of camera performance, it's the Xperia ZL. It's a 13 megapixel camera which isn't the greatest in the world for camera foam, but it does a much much better job than the Nexus 4 because the Nexus 4 camera is pretty terrible. Phone call quality, pretty equal. Speaker volume, the Xperia ZL just wins just slightly in terms of comfortability to hold. Well, again, the Xperia ZL. So overall, picking your favorite device, it's all a matter of what you want. Uh, both devices have their pros, many pros actually, and cons. Some cons, not a lot, but there are some present. So deciding on which device is better is all a matter of your own opinion. No one can decide that for you, including myself. So with that said, if you found this video useful, check out my website in the description below. Hit the like button, it does help. Subscribe, and thanks for watching.